Sorry, I am one minute late. I hope you can hear and see me okay. Um, I just need to finish setting things up here. Okay, good. The mic is correct. Okay, I wanted you to be like that. Perfect. Perfect. We love to see it. I need to update my fundraising graphic, but I figured I'd rather be on time so I can just do that while I wait for everybody to get here. And I'm so sorry if you can hear my boyfriend screaming at his little fake war game. Oh shit, my computer's about to die. Oh my god. Could you, could you, literally, could you imagine? Very jarring. I need to get like a blackout shade for this curtain. I can't believe I just burped. That was embarrassing. Sometimes I like forget that you guys are like real. Why isn't this plug working? Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. Okay. Whew. That scared me so bad. Could you like feel my heart palpitating? Hi, welcome. I see a lot of first time friends here. Let me just get get us up and moving. Give me one second. Let me finish making my little graphic. So sorry that I'm a little bit late today. I really hate that for us, but you know, sometimes life comes at you really quick and you are not expecting it. I really have been feeling like Michael Scott lately and I mean that derogatorily. Like I just feel... <laughs> merch is coming soon. Once I get approved for a credit card, merch will be here. I had my fiance ask me out of nowhere what I thought about Monica Lewinsky and now I'm suspicious why you should be suspicious. They're probably watching my videos. Um, one, one, one. Sorry, I'm trying to do math for my little graphic. I don't know why I decided to make a graphic like this. I don't know who I thought I was. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. I hope everyone's having a phenomenal, what's today, Wednesday? I don't even know what fucking day of the week it is. My hair looks a little crazy. We're just like a little bit disheveled. Um, so excited for this topic. I listened to you wrong about her. Well, my the no fiance? No, no, I was reading someone who was talking about their fiance. I do not have a fiance. No, I don't know. Accusations, accusations. These are accusations that people have been flinging towards me recently. Nope, 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 nope. Hello, I finally completed the expedited pipeline. Have been binging your YouTube channel for about a month, excited for the first live. Oh my God, welcome Weed Witch. Okay, speaking of the pipeline, I don't have TikTok live right now because I'm finishing this graphic. So once I change the graphics, somebody remind me. <laughs> I'm, like I should be jailed for how bad I am at this. And I can't find my fucking little thing. I can't update this graphic because I can't find the thing. Can you guys hear my boyfriend yelling at his little games? Like, can you guys actually hear that? Let me know if you can. Not that I could do anything. Love watching TikTok while you stream having a, an inception mode. Okay, good. I can hear him very clearly, but I think, no! Oh, I hate when it does this. Um, I think you guys can't because the mic is facing the other way, if that makes sense. Layer, send to back, boom, boom. Four minutes in, bippity bop, we're doing the damn thing. Current page, page four, tinks. To Hanks. Mike is facing us. <laughs> ah, so excited for my first live. Completed the pipeline. I'm glad to hear that you completed the pipeline. Um, can you hear my computer sounding like it is about to take off to the moon? Cancel. Okay, that was really jarring. Very weird. You said Mike and I noticed Mike over your shoulder. There's lots of meanings of the word Mike around here. Okay. Boom. There is our update on the um, uh, 
nice little pocket of money to get me a better computer speaking of we are over halfway there which love to see it love to hear it thank you to everyone who has gifted me a few dollars for the new iMac greatly 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 appreciate you if you would like to support please feel free to send a gift via Venmo to at redacted underscore parking lot or just scan that Venmo QR code um, and then hopefully I'll be able to do cooler stuff on stream because my computer won't sound like it's being launched into the fucking stratosphere so let me get the TikTok live people going and then let's talk why don't I have TikTok on here let's talk about no I don't want you to find my contacts I never want that I will never ever want that stop asking me Ugh. I just ate so much food for dinner we had chicken wings and brussels sprouts that was very good don't forget our siblings they're your step siblings I'm, I haven't put them on yet so they can't hear me say that but they are in fact your step siblings just so you know I love you guys more obviously. Oh, I think I just fucked up the camera. Whatever. Okay. Like they can't even see my face. Ow. That fucking hurt. Okay. Now they can see my face a little bit. Okay. Uh, now we're here. We're the favorites. Yeah. Hi, step siblings. Welcome. Do you, are you guys liking the natural light? Because I kind of really, really miss when it was dark and we had the blue light. How are you guys feeling about this? Because I really want to put up a blackout curtain, but I just like really don't know the vibes. Um, okay, let me fucking X out of Canva. What am I doing? Okay, so let's talk about Monica Lewinsky. You're not crazy. We have discussed Monica Lewinsky before. Um, you may not be crazy, but I'm a little bit crazy, but that's okay. Wait, I want to fix my screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, we have discussed Monica Lewinsky before, but we have, ew, no, the video needs to be down there. Oh my God, sorry, we're like really going through a lot right now. There we go, much better. Okay, I love the light, but I do like the vibes that Blackout gives, me too. It'll be dark in a few months at this time. That's true, it might not even be worth doing anything. I like how the colorful lights are a little surprise. You glow in the natural lights. Stop. Okay, so we're talking about Monica Lewinsky today. If you are new here and you did not see the last time I streamed about this, welcome to the fucking party. If you were at that last stream, we do have some new stuff and then I have more opinions because I learned more information. So we'll watch the sunset with you tonight. Oh my God, that's literally so romantic. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it because we have a fair amount of slides to do. So number one, Monica Lewinsky was an unpaid intern when she got hired. And I feel like that really does need to be reiterated because the fact that she went through this and literally didn't even receive money for it. Um, and I also just wanted to put a big content warning on this entire stream. We will be talking about sexual harassment at work, men being terrible and the government. So if those are topics that you do not want to hear about for whatever reason, you are probably not in the right place. Maybe like go watch Eat, Pray, Love or something. I don't know, maybe something a little more soothing than this. Um, um, but just a casual Wednesday night, just a casual Wednesday night in the neighborhood. Also, I have lashes again. Did you see? Aren't you happy for me? <laughs> um, where was I? Oh, anyway, we will be talking about some of those sensitive topics today. So if that's sensitive for you being sensitive, then don't watch this, I guess. So who was Monica? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Monica Lewinsky was an unpaid White House intern for Bill Clinton. Today is going to be more of a timeline of the situation that she went through. And we'll look at misogyny in the media and we'll talk a little bit about her backstory. But I did not get into like a ton of the detail about her childhood because there's just so much to fucking unpack with this one specific situation that I felt like it was not the greatest use of our time um this would make great merch for miss this would make great for miss redacted merch wait what is it oh i don't know what you're talking about with the merch i tried to read it hi barbie okay so me finding out that monica lewinsky was not only put in this awful situation but she was a motherfucking unpaid intern like I just cannot get over how much I hate unpaid internships. Let's actually talk about that for a second. So unpaid internships are classist as fuck because who the fuck has someone funding them so that they can just work for free? Like, oh, the content warning. Wait, what was it? Let me write this down. That's such a good idea. I love when you have good ideas. Content warning, men being terrible, the government. I don't want to put sexual harassment at work on a t-shirt. 
<laughs> trigger warning the government. So anyway, unpaid internships are classist and companies that require them are actually shooting themselves in the foot because then all of their employees are very similar in background. And you, when you have diverse employees, it's better for your company because you can usually sell shit to more people because you have more perspective. Like literally even, this is what you have to think about. Like when you think about something that you want changed, you can't think about it from your perspective because that's what you want. So fucking obviously you think it should happen and it makes sense. You have to think about it from the perspective of someone that only cares about money. And if you can find a reason why it makes sense for someone that only cares about money, then you actually have a fucking chance of making a difference in something because you just have to convince the person that is a garbage person that doesn't have any regard for human life. Once you can convince them that something will work in their favor, that's how you, that's how you'll get it done. You know what I mean? That's like that, that life advice can go for anything. So let's start out with the villain of our story. Yes, of course, the Ariana Grande pick is in here. So William Jefferson Clinton and how the fuck is Bill short for William? I'd like, let's just stop with that for a second. Maybe Billiam, but your name's not Billiam. It's William. So why are you Bill? Um, he was an American politician. He was the 42nd president from 1993 to 2001. He previously served as the governor of Arkansas from 1979 to 1981 and again from 83 to 92. And he was the attorney general of Arkansas from 1977 to 1999 or 1979. So yes, Bill Clinton is still alive. <laughs> Billy and Clinton. It's like convincing oil barons to be green energy profiteers instead. Yeah, exactly. It's like that... Do I love it? Absolutely not. Is it going to work better than anything else we've tried? Probably. So you can, you can be righteous or you can get something done. You know what I mean? Willie is very <laughs> fitting. Okay. So we're going to start a timeline in 1955. So again, for context, Billiam became president in 1993. So he, he's been in this bitch for a minute, but he's in his first term still. So June 1995, Monica Lewinsky, who is 21 years old. I don't know about y'all, but when I was 21, I had two fucking brain cells and no self-esteem. So really not the prime of your life to be around a predator. Um, Monica Lewinsky, 21, comes to the White House as an unpaid intern in the office of the chief of the staff, Leon Panetta. Then in November 1995, Lewinsky and President Clinton became a, began a sexual relationship. Obviously, people did not know about this in November of 1995. It's not like they were like, hey, guys, big announcement on Instagram. 7 p.m. We'll be on Instagram live to announce something. Um, it was a secret, but that's when it started. Adorably neurotic. Thank you for subscribing. Love to hear it. Love to see it. Um, and then in December 1995, Lewinsky makes a move to a paid position in the Office of Legislative Affairs, handling letters from members of Congress. She frequently ferries mail to the Oval Office. Also, fun fact, I, for years, until I was like 14 or something ridiculous, thought it was called the Noble Office, which does make sense. Like it that's not a bad name for it. So I'm really not going to beat myself up too much for it. 21 right now, two brain cells and no self-esteem seems about right. I feel awful for her. I, so, okay. When you're 21 and you have two brain cells and no self-esteem, it's going to get better. Unfortunately, it's going to get worse before it gets better, but I can promise you it will get better. I hope that that was helpful. I'm going to be 25, 25 next week, and I still only have two brain cells. He was 50, and she was like 21, 22. Yeah, yeah. Also feels like a merch idea. Two brain cells and no self-esteem. I am not putting that on a shirt because I want better for y'all. So I'm not going to support that, even though it's really fucking funny. Um, okay, so like I said, she starts there in June, ends up getting a paid position in December. I think most White House interns work for a year, if I'm not mistaken, but you know, I'm not a White House intern, so not like I would fucking know. So how exactly did the relationship start? Like we already said, summer 1995, these people said July, the other people said June, it's probably late June, early July. 
Um, she was an unpaid internship. Although it seems unlikely that an intern would have anything to do with the president, conflict over education policy had led to a government shutdown. How many people are on TikTok? By the way, for the TikTok people, if you want to see the slides and the pictures, you have to come to Twitch. Love you. Thanks. Um, so there was a government shutdown, leaving interns like Lewinsky to take on significant work as many White House staffers were sent home. So you know how sometimes the government can't get their shit together and then they're fighting over stuff and it gets shut down because they can't come to agreement, which is quite, liter quite literally, their only job is to come to an agreement. That is it. And when they can't do that, the government gets shut down. So because all the federal employees at the White House got sent home, they were like, let's get these motherfucking unpaid interns because we don't have to pay them. So if the government shut down, it doesn't matter. They still have to be here. Let's get all these unpaid interns to do like actual work as opposed to just like making copies and like doing like kind of grunt work. Um, so that is why she was like all up in the office. You know what I mean? Um, so Lewinsky was one of those interns that was still there. A report by counsel Kenneth Starr, who investigated Clinton, more on that later, stated that during the shutdown, Miss Lewinsky worked in the chief of staff Panetta's West Wing office where she answered phones and ran errands. The president came into Mr. Panetta's office frequently because of the shutdown, and he sometimes talked with Miss Lewinsky. So literally she was in this guy's office doing work and the president would come in and be like, hey, what's up? Because, I don't know, Bill Clinton, if you are not familiar with William Clinton, he is very, like, charismatic, and, like, he likes to talk to people. Like, he's, like, a man, I don't want to call him a man of the people, because he's, like, fucked over poor people before, probably. But he's, like, very, he's, like, one with the crowd, you know? Like, he's good at working a realm. That's what I'm looking for. He is good at working a realm. Like, he has the charm, he has the razzle-dazzle. He's Billiam, you know what I mean? And not... Not to mention, he's also literally the fucking president. So, like, if you work at the White House and the president comes in, you're not just going to be like, oh, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Like, it's the goddamn president of the United States. Be so serious. So, I will grant, obviously, she's going to fucking talk to him. I don't find that weird at all. I don't find it weird that he was talking to her, and I don't find it weird that she was being responsive to him. I don't think either of those things were weird. Well, we guess we will be referring to him as Billiam throughout the evening. Thank you for asking, no one. Um, she characterized these encounters as continued flirtation. According to Miss Lewinsky, a senior advisor to the chief of staff, Barry Toive, remarked to her that she was getting a great deal of face time with the president, and it continued. And honestly, would probably do the same. Like, if the president was flirting with me and I was a White House intern, I may be dumb, but I ain't fucking stupid. Like, you're gonna flirt back. Like, anyone that looked at this and was like, how dare she? Like, be so for real. Like, if you were in this situation, you think you would be like, no, Mr. President, we are not going to do that. Like, shut the fuck up. Um, so the Star Report claimed that Lewinsky and Clinton flirted, which included moments such as Lewinsky showing him the straps of her thong underwear as she lifted up her jacket. So I guess she did, like, like a whale tail and, like, you know, I guess that's what she was doing. Um, and then November 15th, 1995, Lewinsky was invited to Clinton's private study by the president where she testified that she acknowledged we were both attracted to each other, leading the president to ask if he could kiss her and leaving her number for him. I literally hate men. Like, the way when you're 21, that's like a really normal flirtation. Like, oh, I think I'm into you. I'm into you. Here's my number. But like, you are a 50-year-old man that's married. Like, <laughs> Why are you acting like we're at, like, a Applebee's in college? Like, what the fuck are you doing? The whale tail was big back then. Yeah, the whale tail was the moment back then. You know what I mean? Um, so on the same day, she was later asked again by the president to come to his private study where they began their sexual relationship. So I guess they kissed, and then she left, and then he was like, get your ass back in here. I mean... William probably didn't say that, but you know what I mean. So they continued to see each other over the course of the next 18 months, with Lewinsky testifying they had 10 sexual encounters during that time, eight while she worked at the White House and two after she had been sent to the Pentagon. They also spoke at length over the phone and exchanged gifts, which included Lewinsky giving him several neckties and Clinton giving her a special edition of Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. So literally, he was, yes, a gecko parking lot. He was in... 
a goofy, silly, flirty mood. He was flirting like a schoolgirl. He was getting her little gifts. He was calling her and they would talk on the phone at night. Like this dude didn't have a whole ass country to run. He's having a situationship with Monica Lewinsky at his, again, his grown age. This man is 50 US years old. Like you're grown. What are you doing? Passing notes in class, but it's the White House. Very much so. It's crazy how long they hit it without social media and stuff. What is this on me? Oh, I thought I saw a spider. Literally, if this happened in 2023, Monica Lewinsky would have been on Instagram Live and been like, hey, you guys, I'm here with Billiam in the White House. Like, absolutely, it would have ended in even worse shambles. Billiam forgot he was literally the most powerful man in the United States. LMAO is old ass a Walt Whitman book as a gift to your mistress is wild. If I was dating a guy and he gave me a Walt Whitman book, I'd be like, you're too old for me. Like, you're a thousand, so I actually can't do this. Like, I was willing to overlook it, but like now it's unoverlookable because of the fucking Walt Whitman book. Trump with Olivia Rodriguez. <laughs> Colleen Ballinger times a thousand. Stop! I'm still not over Trump with Olivia Rodriguez. <laughs> that was really funny. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So yeah. He's, he's giving the most old man as mistress gifts of all time. And then in 1996, then Deputy White House, or April 1996, then Deputy White House Chief of Staff Evelyn Lieberman transfers Lewinsky to a job as an assistant to the Pentagon spokesman Ken Bacon. Lieberman told the New York Times that the move was due to inappropriate and immature behavior and an inattention to work. Um, so what I'm wondering is how the fuck you go from being an unpaid intern to a paid assistant for being inappropriate and mature. Like, I'm pretty sure if you're being inappropriate at work as a White House intern, they just fire you. Like, you're an unpaid intern. You're very fireable. Like, that's the whole shtick is that you're fireable. So the fact that she got transferred into a paid position is just like, that literally makes no sense to me. And I know it's like a downgrade to go from the White House to the Pentagon, but still, I feel like they would have just fired her. You know what I mean? Ken Bacon is such a fake name. So this is also where she meets Linda Tripp. Linda Tripp is a career government worker. She used to work in the White House. She's done a couple of things. She, you know, she's done like admin work. And to be fair, if you are like a secretary admin person for the federal government, you can make fucking bank because you a have to be really good at your job b you have to have a super fucking high security clearance and c you have to like handle a ton of really confidential information so they have to pay you enough that you would not sell that information on like craigslist to like the chinese government or the mafia or anybody that the government hates you know so you can make a lot of money as an admin in the federal government just a fun fact for you <clears throat> to keep her quiet probably. Yeah, and someone who said it was Billiam's inattention to work. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I feel like Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky have the energy of, you know, like the one kid in class who's crazy and then they seat him next to like the quiet little girl and they're like, hey, make sure he stops acting crazy. Like that's them. Like not literally, but in aura, I feel that that is them. Um, so again, I don't understand why she got that weird demotion promotion. So Lewinsky begins to tell fellow Pentagon employee Linda Tripp of her alleged relationship with Clinton because keep in mind, Monica Lewinsky is down fucking bad. She's in a situation ship with the president. I cannot imagine anything more like gaslighting than being in a situation ship with the president. Like no one knows about it. You can't tell anyone about it. Like it would be difficult. And again, she's 21 years old. Like developmentally, she is not really equipped to handle any of this so then when this lady like takes an interest in her at work and is like being really nice and stuff she kind of like opens up to her which is very valid but linda tripp is a bitch and a hater and we're not doing it it's giving my boyfriend lives in canada exactly 
Exactly. Did anyone else watch the American Crime Story about this? They did such a good job. Yes, would highly recommend you watch the American Crime Story. We're going to talk about Monica Lewinsky and Linda's relationship, but it's like when you see it with actors, obviously, it's like really, really gets into it in a cool way. Um, but basically, they were very close. Like Monica would talk to Linda Tripp on the phone all the time and really vent to her about like, did Bill call me? He's ignoring me, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like literally this woman was carrying her emotionally and she was like so, so opening up to her. So August 1997, Tripp encountered Kathleen Wiley coming out of the Oval Office, disheveled, her face red and her lipstick was off. Wiley later alleged that Clinton groped her. Clinton's lawyer, Bill Bennett, said in the article that Linda Tripp is apparently not to be trusted. In the fall of 1997, Tripp begins taping conversations with Lewinsky, detailing her alleged affair with the president. So Linda Tripp is literally taping Monica Lewinsky without her consent and is doing it under the guise of being her friend. Like she's having these long conversations with her that she's already been having for a while and talking to her about her feelings and all of this stuff. And now she starts taping her, I guess, because she thought she could use it to, I don't even fucking know what she thought she was going to do with this and her original intention. Um, Sam and Sounds, thank you for subscribing. Three month streak. We love to see it. Linda refused to go see Barbie. No, absolutely. Major ick of Linda. Major, major ick. So then October 1997, Trip meets with Newsweek Michael Is Isakoff, Lucianne, and Jonah Goldberg at Jonah's apartment in Washington, according to a Newsweek report. The Goldbergs listen to a tape of Trip and Lewinsky conversation. So literally, she takes it to the fucking media. Like, sh this bitch sucks. I cannot reiterate how much this bitch sucks. Um, then October 1997, Lewinsky interviews with the U.S. ambassador uh, to the U.N., Bill Richardson, for a low-level public affairs position. So she is trying to get out of the Pentagon and work in a different organization, which like kind of the government, but not really the government, if you get what I'm saying. So, December 1997, Lewinsky leaves the Pentagon. December 8th, Betty Curie, Clinton's personal secretary, asks presidential pal Vernon Jordan to help Lewinsky find a job. December 11th, Lewinsky meets with Jordan and he refers her to several job leads. So, she interviewed, I guess she didn't get it or it was in waiting or whatever. She ends up leaving the Pentagon anyway, and she gets this help from Vernon Jordan, who's friends with Billiam. So I guess Billiam was like, girl boss queen, I'm going to help you get that job. Like, you're fucking fine. Doesn't matter that you got demoted from your internship. Like, you're going to get it. My friend is going to help you out. And so she goes to his friend and he like helps her and gives her some job leads. And it's just like generally being, you know, like a helpful old man, I guess. Um, that's like, I think the only benefit from Monica Lewinsky, like at least you're getting help with men for your career, like in the short term, even though it obviously backfired super bad. Well, I never think that was her intention. So backfired isn't the right word, but obviously that was very short lived is what I mean. But anyway, December 17th, this is where things get interesting. Lewinsky is subpoenaed by lawyers for Paula Jones who is suing the president on sexual harassment charges. And then December 28th, Lewinsky makes her final visit to the White House, according to White House logs, and is signed in by Curie, Billiam's assistant, um, or secretary, whatever you want to call it. Lewinsky reportedly met privately with Clinton and alleges that he encouraged her to be evasive in her answers in the Jones lawsuit. So Billiam is like, listen, they're going to ask you some questions. Just fucking be like, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't That's crazy. That's you're saying that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, so I guess he called her back for that last little rendezvous so that he could prep her to be interviewed, essentially. Um, seems to be his main objective here. Hold on. I want to scooch this over a little bit. Weird, shitty move, William. Finally completed the pipeline. So happy to be here. So glad you completed the pipeline. Um, just like Jim Bob Duggar, who didn't know anything when he testified. That's fucking facts right there. That is facts. Um, so context for Paula Jones. On dis So I'm going to explain this whole case to you and why she's suing. So on December 18th, 1993, so like a couple years prior to what we're talking about, I think we were 97 at this point, American Spectator magazine published an article titled His Cheatin' Heart by David Brock, which reported on meeting a who which reported on meeting with a woman whose name was Paula in the article, and Bill Clinton was her governor of Arkansas. Paula was Paula Jones, who accused him of public accused him publicly of sexual harassment. 
she did this publicly on February 11th, 1994. So the article came out in 93 where she was just Paula, and then in 1994, they like fully, fully went public. In a press conference in Washington, D.C., and apparently she alleges that the incident occurred after meeting him for the first time in May 1991, and like we said, she filed her lawsuit on May 6th, 1994. Jones claimed that she suffered emotional damage after Clinton exposed himself to her in an Arkansas hotel room in May of 91. A conservative legal group that volunteered to fund her lawsuit had gotten an anonymous tip about Lewinsky. So Jones lawyers subpoenaed Lewinsky in hopes of arguing that Clinton displayed a pattern of workplace harassment. So a lot of people are like, oh, how did this thing with Monica Lewinsky even become public? This is how. Monica never reported it. She never told anybody other than Linda Tripp. Like, this is how it originally became into the public sphere, even though Linda Tripp was trying to sell it to the press at this point. Um, so yeah, that is how she kind of got wrapped into this was through the Paula Jones case in the American crime story or whatever it's called. They show more about Paula Jones and how like she really got fucked over too. And she kind of got pressured into doing this lawsuit by these conservative lawyers because these conservative lawyers, let me tell you, conservatives are fucking organized and they know what they're doing and they are always planning five steps ahead. They wanted to impeach Bill Clinton because they didn't like his policy. So they viewed Paula Jones as a way for them to get that done. They did not fund her case because they care about women being sexually harassed. They funded her case because they wanted to impeach Bill Clinton. End of story. Full stop. Um, Linda is the OG Karen. Generic ass name. Unrelated, but I like your makeup. So that was actually the nicest thing you could say because I don't have any makeup on. I just have fake eyelashes on. Does that count as makeup? I think it counts. But anyway, the lawyers are trying to show that Bill Clinton is a sexual harasser. Here's a picture of Paula Jones. I couldn't find one that wasn't attached to Bill Clinton. I could have cropped it, but I was in a rush, so that's what she looks like. So you'll need this context to understand what's going on moving forward. So Kenneth Winston Starr. During Clinton's first term, Attorney General Reno, Janet Reno, approved an investigation into Clinton's business dealings in Arkansas. The resulting inquiry is known as Whitewater, the name of the housing development corporation that the center of the controversy was led by led from 1994 by independent counsel Kenneth Starr. So Kenneth Starr is leading this like group of people to investigate the Whitewater real estate dealings. We're not even going to talk about it because it's boring and doesn't matter because the investigation lasted several years and was very expensive. They were unable to find evidence of any wrongdoings by the Clintons in this real estate dealings. So that is why they are investigating him. Not because of the Paula Jones lawsuit, because she is lawsuiting him, not like impeaching him. Paula Jones can't do that. This is to investigate if he committed any crimes in this real estate dealing. So we are in January 1998. January 7th, 1998, Lewinsky files an affidavit in the Jones case in which she denies ever having a sexual relationship with Bill Clinton. So Lewinsky with the Paula Jones case, so she's like, that shit never happened. I did not fuck that man. I don't know what you're talking about. And then on January 9th, Linda Tripp delivers the tapes to her lawyers, Jim Moody. So she delivers the tapes to the lawyer. I don't know what the fuck she thinks she's going to do with them. And then on January 12th, Linda Tripp contacts the office of Whitewater Independent Counsel Kenneth Starr. So like literally the press, I understand because they'll pay you for the story. But, and I guess when she went to the press, what they showed in American Crime Story, I'm not 100% sure if it's true though, is that the press was like, girl, you cannot tape people without consent. Get the fuck away from us. But I know it varies state to state. And then they're also in D.C. So I can imagine that would be legally complicated. So I guess she realized she can't sell it to the press. So instead of just taking that as a sign to fucking give it up and get out of other people's business, she instead decides that she is going to take it even further and take it to this fucking real estate investigation. Like, what does this have to do with a real estate investigation? Nothing. It has nothing to do with a real estate investigation. Also, for those of you on TikTok, if you want to see the slides, you have to come to Twitch. Thanks. Um, so Linda Tripp contacts the Office of Whitewater Independent Counsel to talk about Lewinsky and the tapes of the conversation. The tapes allegedly have Lewinsky detailing an affair with Clinton and indicate that Clinton and Clinton's friend Vernon Jordan told Lewinsky to lie about the alleged affair under oath. So apparently Clinton and Vernon Jordan were like, girl, lie about that shit. Who gives a fuck? Um, and then January 13th, 1998, Tripp gets wired by FBI agents that are working with the Independent Counsel star. She meets with Lewinsky at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Bar in Pentagon City, Virginia, and records their conversation. So, like, how fucking deranged do you have to be to wear a wire 
to snitch on your friend who's 20 years younger than you when you don't even have any charges against you. Like I get where people wear a wire and they're an informant because they want a plea deal and they feel really fucking desperate, but Linda Tripp didn't do anything. So why the fuck are you doing this? And it's people saying, cause lying oath is under a felony. Like Linda Tripp, yeah, girl, you worked for the government for 30 years, but like you are not the Avengers. Like just because she lied under oath does not mean that you have to get all up in that. Like it's a victimless crime. Like I know it's a felony, but like fuck off. It's not your felony to deal with. I don't know. I just feel like Linda is really a hater and like they're snitching is one thing, but wearing a wire on your friend is a whole other thing. That is not a girl's girl. She really is not. And she gaslit herself into believing she was a hero. She was like, lying under oath is a felony. I have to do the right thing. Like, literally shut the fuck up. Like, you're not winning karma points. Jesus is not looking at you and clapping. Like, what do you think this is? Um, so she records her at this fucking bar. And then January 14th, 1998, Lewinsky gives Tripp a document headed points to make in an affidavit coaching Tripp on what to tell the Jones lawyers about Kathleen Wiley, another former White House staffer. So remember, 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 remember how Linda Tripp, when she was working at the White House, saw Kathleen Wiley coming out looking all disheveled, and he, she was like, oh my god, Bill Clinton just groped me. Now, Linda Tripp is having to talk about that because of the Jones case. Do you see how like complicated and convoluted and fucked up this whole thing is? So she's having to talk about it. And because Monica Lewinsky is still protective over her situationship, Billiam, she's like, here's what you should say. Like, let's not like everybody don't freak out, whatever. Um, so Wiley had recently testified about the alleged unsolicited sexual advances made by the president in 1993, January 16th, 1998 star contacts, eternal attorney general, Janet Reno to get permission to expand the probe beyond just the real estate thing, even though it kind of seems like you're already fucking doing that. Um, Reno agrees and submits the request to a panel of three federal judges. The judges agree to allow star to formally investigate the possibility of subordination of perjury and obstruction of justice in the Jones case. So because they have these tapes, you see what I'm saying? Like, because originally they were investigating him for real estate, and then he gets sued by Paula Jones. And then because within the Paula Jones case, it appears that he told Monica Lewinsky to be evasive, then the real estate investigation was like, well, we're going to investigate that too. And the attorney general and federal judges were like, that's fine, I guess you can investigate that too. So that is how we got here, even though like n neither Bill Clinton nor Monica Lewinsky wanted any of this to be public. Here we are. Um, where was I? Yeah, so the they are investigating him now for obstruction of justice in the Jones case. Tripp and Lewinsky meet again at the Ritz-Carlton. FBI agents and U.S. attorneys intercede and take Lewinsky to a hotel room where they question her and offer her immunity. Lewinsky contacts her mother, Marcia Lewis, who travels down from New York City by train. Lewis contacts her ex-husband, who calls attorney William Ginsburg, a family friend. Ginsburg advises her not to accept the immunity deal until he learns more. They literally held her at a hotel room for so long and they were being super manipulative to her and they were like, if you leave, we don't know if we can offer you immunity, which is not fucking true. If police are ever holding you somewhere, you need to ask these questions. Am I under arrest? Am I free to leave? I would like to speak to my lawyer. That is all you need to fucking say to police officers ever. I know I've said it so many times on stream, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's so important. Like, they cannot just hold you there. You need to literally just repeat, repeat, repeat. I would like to speak to my lawyer. Am I being, am I being arrested? Am I free to leave? That's it. Because if you ask those questions, like they have to fucking answer you. Well, I don't know if they have to answer you. Um, say it again for the people in the back. Exactly. I would like to speak to my lawyer. 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 Or I would like a lawyer. If you do not have a lawyer, can say you want one. They will get one. They won't be as good, but they'll be a lawyer. Am I being detained? Exactly. Even if you're innocent, especially if you're innocent, especially if you're innocent, even if you're like, I didn't do anything wrong. I should just answer their questions and they will let me leave. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Am I being detained? Am I free to leave? I would like to speak to my lawyer. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to say. And Monica Lewinsky was in this Ritz-Carlton hotel room thinking she was halfway under arrest for hours and hours and hours and hours. I wonder if they fed her. I would be like, 
we don't gonna get room service or anything. I hear the chicken tenders here are phenomenal. Um, Monica's mom, after hearing that her daughter is literally being intimidated by the president of the United States, like this fucking call to get as a parent, I'd be like, oh, okay, period. All right, let's get through this. We are good. We are so good. Me and you are good. Um, meet a Linda Tripp after finding out she got Monica Lewinsky to trust her and then exposing the story without getting explicit informed consent from the victim. That is not very feminist. It is not very feminist to bust out another woman's trauma story without their explicit consent. It's really not. Um, more in January 1998, rough month. Um, Ginsburg flies to Washington to represent Lewinsky. Clinton gives his deposition in the Jones lawsuit in which he denies having a sexual relationship with Lewinsky. Newsweek magazine decides not to run a story by investigative reporter Michael Isakoff with the Lewinsky tapes and the alleged affair. That is who Linda Tripp was talking to, to remind you. Clinton meets with Curry, his assistant, and compares his memory of hers with Lewinsky in regards to Monica Lewinsky. January 19th, Lewinsky's name surfaces in an internet gossip column, The Drudge Report, which mentions rumors Newsweek had decided to delay publishing a piece on Lewinsky and the alleged affair. January 21st, 1998, several news organizations report the alleged sexual relationship between Lewinsky and Clinton. Clinton denies the allegations and the scandal erupts. So there it is. Came from Drudge Report on January 19th. It's all over the media by January 21st. Um, January 22nd, 1998, Clinton reiterates his denial of their relationships and says he never urged Lewinsky to lie. Starr issues a subpoenas for a number of people as well as White House records. Starr also defends the expansion of his initial Whitewater investigation. Vernon Jordan holds a press conference to flatly deny he told Lewinsky to lie. Jordan also says that Lewinsky told him that she did not have a sexual relationship with the president. I feel like he did not have to throw that last part in there because... Why would she say that? Like, if she really didn't have a sexual relationship with the president, why would she say that? Like, no one would have brought that up. You know? Like, he, he could have just left that part out. Like, this was a press conference. He was not under oath. Like, you literally didn't have to fucking say that. It just feels really unnecessary that he said that. I don't know. I don't like that. I feel like he, like, just no. Ken Starr trying to explain how the president getting a blowjob is relevant to the Whitewater real estate investigation because, like, you got hired for a job. Like, really, now is the time to go above and beyond? Like, you got hired to investigate real estate. You didn't need to fucking do all of this. Um, and then Bill Clinton told his cabinet, he was like, I did not fuck her. I literally, I barely even remember her. Groupies are crazy. On January 23rd, like I said, uh, he assures his cabinet of his innocence. And then Judge Susan Weber Wright puts off indefinitely a deposition Lewinsky was scheduled to give in the Jones lawsuit. Slay Susan Weber. Because she can see it's really irrelevant. Um, where was I? Clinton's personal secretary, Betty Curie, and other aides are subpoenaed to appear before a federal grand jury. Ginsburg says Lewinsky is being squeezed by Starr and is now the target of the Whitewater investigation. January 24th, Clinton asked former Deputy White House Chief of Staff Harold Ikes and former Commerce Secretary Mikey Cantor to return to the White House to help deal with the controversy. So he, I guess he's calling back former employees. He's like, come land this shit storm, my brother, I need you. Um... Where was I? Talks between a star and attorneys for Lewinsky over a possible immunity agreement. Then January 25th, Ginsburg says Lewinsky will tell all in exchange for immunity. Clinton political advisor James Carville says a war will be waged between Clinton supporters and Kenneth Starr over the investigation tactics. January 26, Clinton forcefully repeats his denial saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Ginsburg offers Starr a summary of what Lewinsky is prepared to say to the grand jury in exchange for a grant of immunity from the prosecution. So basically what immunity means is that like, it's like game show immunity. Like they can't prosecute you for that. So they can't prosecute her for lying under oath because in exchange, she's telling them everything she knows. That happens a lot. Sometimes it's also called a plea deal. An immunity deal is where you cannot get charged at all. A plea deal is like, we could give you five years, but if you help us, if you help us, we'll give you two. That's a plea deal. If you plead guilty and like do shit for them. An immunity deal is like, I didn't do shit. I'm not going to get in trouble for anything that I did. And I'm going to tell y'all what the fuck happened, even though I kind of did do some shit. That's the difference. Um, that was a meme before memes exist. <laughs> yeah, this is what I want. So 
Let's listen to Billiam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I have to go back to work on my State of the Union speech. And I worked on it till pretty late last night. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I, with that woman? Ew. Miss Lewinsky, I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. Okay, I guess. And yes, we are going to talk about Hillary Clinton only a little bit, though. So we are still in January 1998. I just want to acknowledge the fact that we have been in January 1998 for literally like 12 slides, I think. Like... I'm not afraid to say, if I was Monica Lewinsky, I would not have made it to January 31st. I don't even know if that's a day. Just January of 30 or 31, I can't remember. That useless fucking song is terrible. But I would not have made it through this month. Absolutely not. Also, I want to take a side note. Can you imagine if she didn't have rich parents? I think having rich parents was really the only thing that got her through this because she had a good fucking lawyer. And if you did not have a decent fucking lawyer going through this, like there's no way that you would be fine. Absolutely not. They would have eaten her up alive if she didn't have a decent lawyer. And she didn't even have a great lawyer, but she had a good lawyer, you know? Imagine if she like literally came from a background where like her parents couldn't just like run and help her and understand the legal system and pay for her lawyer and deal with the press and all this stuff. Like, I think they had to pay for her to get security. They had to pay for a lawyer, like all of this. Like she was an unpaid intern. Imagine if we didn't fuck up in this way and Hillary Clinton beat Trump because she didn't have to carry this awful weight on her name. Uh, I'm not a Hillary Clinton stan. I think Hillary Clinton lost to Trump because she ran a really shitty campaign, personally. And she was afraid to do anything, you know, super punchy. I do feel bad for her because she's the victim of misogyny for so many years. I think she's really dulled who she is as a person because I know early in her career she did a lot of good things. But she didn't lose because of this. I think I think that is a, a wishful thinking to think Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election because of this. She did not run a good campaign. She did not. She assumed that she would win. She was taking it for granted. She was acting like it. She didn't reach out to voters in effective areas, and she didn't do a good job. Sorry. Hate to say it. Um, honestly, Hillary sucks, but being married to this man would spark my villain era. No, for fucking real. So back to January 1998. Um, January 27th, Jones attorney John Whitehead... This is Paula Jones. Answer star subpoena with several documents, possibly including Clinton's deposition in the Jones suit, and Curry testifies before the grand jury. First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton says in a broadcast interview that this is a vast right-wing conspiracy is behind the charges against her husband. A Portland, Oregon man, Andy Byler, alleges he had a five-year affair with Lewinsky, and his lawyer promises to turn over documents and items to star investigators. Which... Shut the fuck up. We're going to get back to this in one second because it gets way worse. Um, Clinton delivers State of the Union address, making no mention of the scandal. Then January 29th, the judge in the Paula Jones lawsuit rules that Monica Lewinsky is not essential to the core issues of the Jones case. Thank fucking God. And has ordered that all evidence related to Lewinsky be excluded from the Jones proceedings. That just makes sense legally. Like, Paula Jones and Monica Lewinsky never worked together. They weren't in the same location. Their cases were not similar. Like, like they just legally were not relevant to each other. I get how it's same category, but, like, to me, from a legal perspective, that just makes no sense. Um, then January 31st, 1998, immunity decisions between... Monica Lewinsky's attorney, William Ginsburg, and Ken Starr's office appear, appear stalled. Ginsburg says Lewinsky plans to go to California in the coming weeks to visit her father. So let's get back to this. Let's get back to this Andy Belier guy. Actually, before that, Hillary literally just said that this was a vast right-wing conspiracy. She really looked like a clown for that, I'm not going to lie. And I just kind of wanted to include this gif of her. So going to Andy Belier now. Who the hell is Andy Belier? And why is he saying that he had a five-year affair with Monica Lewinsky? And why did he feel the need to come out of nowhere and give over documents to his lawyer? Because again, 
He's not under oath. I feel like the biggest thread that's disturbing here is people willing to give over terrible information to the government for no reason. They are not under any kind of pressure. They are not have no charges against them. Like, why did you do that? So not only did Andy Belier turn over information for no reason and embarrass her, he was her high school teacher. That's right. He taught her in high school. That did not come out 20 years later. He fully said it with his chest. Yep, his whole chest, he said it. This is a interview with him dated January 28th, 1998. This is from the Washington Post. The Washington Post, this is not a gossip website. This is not TMZ. This is the Washington Post posting this in 1998. Monica Lewinsky's former high school drama instructor said that yesterday he had a long running affair with her that began in 1992 during her college years in Portland, Oregon and continued until last year throughout much of the time he has reportedly as she reportedly has alleged she has had an intimate relationship with Bill Clinton. In an account questioning Lewinsky's credibility, Andy Blyer, age 32, said through an attorney that Lewinsky had called him as often as four to five times a day after coming to Washington in 1995 as a White House intern, and that she obsessively talked about sex, including boasts that she was having a sexual relationship with a high-ranking White House official. Standing beside Belier and his wife at the news conference outside their home, attorney Terry Giles said the Beliers bo would both describe Monica. The grown fucking people in their 30s are describing this young woman would both describe Monica as having a pattern of twisting facts, especially to enhance her version of her own self-image. I couldn't in good conscience just sit on this and not tell the authorities what I know. Everybody wants to be the fucking hero, Belier said in a response to questions as to why he had come forward now. He said his wife with Lewins or he said his relationship with Lewinsky ended last spring after his wife became aware of it. It has been a very difficult time for my wife and I this past year trying to mend this. So this is what gets me. She's 21, and you said you'd been having an affair for five years. Okay. Okay. She's 21, and you've been having an affair for five years, but it started when she was in college. Okay. For sure, for sure. I guess at this point, she's now 22, but still, I highly doubt that your affair just started the second she graduated. No one starts an affair their freshman year of college with their high school teacher. And you went to the Washington Post to talk about this. So I did some Googling. He was her high school theater teacher. He is currently a professor of theater at Lipscomb University and has been for 11 years. This is his LinkedIn. Feel free to send him a message. Feel free to let him know what you think. Feel free to let Lipscomb University know what you think of this. Feel free to call Lipscomb University and tell them what you think of their professor who slept with a student at a previous position. I'm sure they know. I'm sure they know. But let's remind them. Let's remind them. And at first I wasn't going to do this because I was like, eh, I'm not 100% sure it's him. But judging by the photos and the fact that they're both theater professors and Andy Belier is not exactly a common name, I'm going to go with the fact that it is him. I'm going to go with that. So feel free to call Lipscomb University. And I just want to travel back in time. I just want to go to January 1998 and give Monica Lewinsky a, home, a hug because could you imagine your fucking current predator is denying everything and then your previous predator is like, no, the current predator is lying. Like, okay, all right, man. Fucking all right, man. I don't fucking know, dude. Like, 
I would not have made it through January 1998 if I was her. And I have no idea if he's still with his wife. If anyone wants to Google that, go for it. So at least now January's over. We get to February 1998. Word comes that independent counsel Kenneth Starr has rejected the latest written statement by Monica Lewinsky's lawyer seeking immunity from prosecution. Their on-again, off-again discussions are officially off. So she's probably not going to get immunity, it's looking like right now. And then February 5th, 1998, Ken Starr says his inquiry is moving very quickly and we've made very significant progress. February 6th at a news conference, Bill Clinton says he would never consider resigning because of the accusations against him. He said, I would never walk away from the people of this country and the trust they've placed in me. February 10th, Monica Lewinsky's mother, Marsha Lewis, appears before the grand jury. Ken Starr and his investigators suspect that Lewis was aware of her daughter's alleged affair with President Bill Clinton. Still don't see why that requires her to testify, but... Oh, I guess to see... <coughs> if Monica was lying under oath and to see if Bill Clinton was lying I guess that makes sense never mind I see it from a legal perspective um I say that like I'm a fucking lawyer um, February 11th, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton predicts the allegations against her husband will slowly dissipate over time under the weight of its own unsustainability. A retired Secret Service uniformed guard, Louis C. Fox, claims in an interview that he saw Monica Lewinsky come to the West Wing on weekends with documents she said were for the president. Cute how it's always the American people at the end of his sentences. Oh, Church of Christ College, of course. Yes, Lipscomb University is a Christian university. I was targeted. I'm a victim of a teenage girl. Literally. Literally. Hillary was in for the shock of her life. Oh my god. Then February 12th, Monica Lewinsky returns to Washington from California. Her mother fails to appear for a third day of grand jury testimony. Her lawyers say she's emotionally drained and unable to proceed. February 18th, one of Bill Clinton's closest advisor, Bruce Lindsay, spends the day before the Whitewater grand jury. The hearing is stopped briefly when questions of executive privilege are raised. Then February 19th, Ken Starr's chronologically shows chronolog chronology, sorry, shows presidential friend Vernon Jordan began seeking private sector jobs for Monica Lewinsky within 72 hours of her being listed as a potential witness in the Paula Jones civil rights lawsuit against President Bill Clinton. Then February 20th, Lewinsky's attorney Bill Ginsburg says the former intern met with Vernon Jordan much earlier than was being reported. So they're trying to say like this thing with Vernon Jordan has nothing to do with this. I guess they were trying to show like Bill Clinton said he would get you a job if you shut the fuck up. And they were saying, no, Bill Clinton said that he would get me a job way before he told me to shut the fuck up is their legal stance right now. Um, she needed a few days in a quiet room with soft music and an act. Sure. Um, was this information all available to the public at time? It's not like they were getting reporting right when it happened, but kind of it was coming out like a day later, a couple hours later, whatever. It just kind of depended on the thing and the legal proceedings. Um, do, 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 do. Then February 23rd, there's more legal wrangling over Marsha Lewis, Lewinsky's mother. They will resume her grand jury testimony and her lawyer, Billy Martin, says that she is going through hell. Martha Lewis, like, oh, I cannot imagine this. Having to testify about your daughter's affair with the president for three days? Like, God, I thought we had rights in this country. Um, then on February 25th, White House lawyers are preparing legal briefs to defend the administration's position that executive privilege should shield President Clinton's top aides from certain questions in the Lewinsky investigation. February 26th, the White House senior communications aide Sidney Blumenthal testifies before a grand jury answering questions about any role he may have played in spreading negative information about investigators in the independent counsel Ken Starr's office. So you can see, it's literally getting to be such a shit show and everybody is involved. Um, 14 Democrats in the House right Attorney General Janet Reno complaining about subpoenas issued by Starr. So apparently they were just like violently subpoenaing all the Democrats all the time and it was making it super difficult to get work done. Like I said, again, the right wing people are very, very crafty, not to prove Hillary Clinton right, but I really do think this was 100% politically motivated. They did not give a fuck about these women. They cared about stalling the government and making Bill Clinton look bad. Um, a nonprofit group that studies women in the workplace says it will contribute $10,000 as seed money for a legal defense fund for Lewinsky because her parents are rich, but they are not go into a court of law against with slash a part of the federal government rich, you know? 
And then February 27th, White House communications aide Sidney Blumenthal refused to answer some of the questions posed before the grand jury, citing controversy over whether the independent counsel can force aides to testify about conversations they had with the president. So it's super legally complicated. It's really just a whole fucking mess. Then on March 3rd, Vernon Jordan testifies before the grand jury. March 5th, lawyers for Monica Lewinsky battle with Ken Starr over the immunity still. Then March 9th, District Judge Susan Weber requests that Miss Jones' attorneys include evidence of the Monica Lewinsky affair during a Jones trial. Or wait, yeah, reject a request by Miss Jones. That's what I thought. Sorry. So that judge who said, hey, we're not using the Monica Lewinsky stuff, apparently... Paula Jones was like, but I really want to use the Monica Lewinsky stuff. And the judge was like, well, you can't. So sorry. Then March 10th, Kathleen Wiley, that former White House volunteer who accused the president of fondling her, testifies before the jury for four hours. March 11th, the jury spends a day listening to audio recordings, which they say are tips made by Linda Tripp of her conversations with Monica Lewinsky. This fucking bitch, Linda Tripp. I feel like Phyllis Schlafly and Linda Tripp would have been besties. Oh, they absolutely have the same energy. Then March 16th, Clinton says, nothing improper happened when he was alone with Kathleen Wiley, responding to her accusations aired in an interview on 60 Minutes the previous night. The White House releases letters that Wiley sent to the president, signed fondly Kathleen in an effort to cast doubt on her story. So they were like, look, she literally wrote you a letter and signed it nice. Obviously, you didn't grope her. That was their legal take, I guess. Um, then March 17th, the White House charges that Kathleen Wiley tried to sell her story to a book publisher for $300,000. Wiley's attorney denies the charges. A friend of Lewinsky and the presidential diarist give grand jury testimony. I think the presidential diarist is the person that like takes notes about what's going on in the White House. Then March 19th, or March 1998, we are still in it. A rough month again for Lewinsky. Um, Julie Steele's affidavit is released. In it, she says she lied when she claimed Kathleen Wiley had come to her house the night of the encounter and told her about it. So I think literally everyone just wants to be the center of attention in this legal proceeding is what I'm gathering. Then March... Sorry. Then March 20th, 1998, President Clinton decides to formally invoke executive privilege by, I guess, saying, I'm the president, I don't have to deal with this shit. Then March 25th, Monica Lewinsky's mother, Marsha, fails to persuade a federal judge to excuse her from a third day of testimony. Star subpoenas records from Kramer Books and afterwards on Monica Lewinsky's purchases at the store because apparently she bought a novel about phone sex. If you were hired to investigate real estate and you find yourself subpoenaing the book records of a young woman, maybe ask, have I gone too far? Am I man-bossing too close to the sun, perhaps? I think I've taken things a bit too far for what would be good and healthy in this moment. You know what I'm saying? Um, then on March 26, the White House operatives Marcia Scott and Nancy Hernreich testify again before the grand jury. I'm so sick of the government, what the hell? The White House and the media digging up everything they can on this young woman to make her the villain. Like, I feel so bad for her. She's literally just being everyone's punching bag in this. She's being everyone's fucking punching bag. I'm so sick. Like, the amount of government resources that got spent on this, like, could we have some health care, please? Then April 1st, a judge dismisses Paula Jones' sexual harassment suit over a lack of evidence. Paula Jones did end up filing an appeal at the end of July. April 29th, D.C. Circuit Judge Norma Holloway Johnson, who would preside over the grand jury investigation into the affair, rejects Lewinsky's lawyer argument that she had been offered an immunity agreement with Starr. Immunity had been offered, but the deal was never completed. Then April 30th, Clinton said, I really believe it's important for me not to say any more about this. Literally so me when people try and hold me accountable. I'm just not going to talk about it. Thank you so much. Um... Do, 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 do. And he said that in a response to a question about whether he thought the American public should care about what the president does in his private life. He said, I think in some ways I'm the last person that needs to be having a national conversation about this. Like, ugh. I personally think the president should not be allowed to be married or have a personal life. I think that they should only be allowed to have a situationship. And I think that that is the greatest honor is to be the president's situationship, even more so if it's a female president. Like, you don't, you cannot be a good husband, father, wife, mother, you cannot do that and be president. So you just can have a situationship. I'm so sorry about that. 
I feel like we shouldn't care as long as they aren't wasting our money, right? Like, I want a president with the low maintenance situation ship. Y'all hang out at night sometimes when you're both free. That person just gets to live in the White House. They don't have any official duties. They're not like the first lady or the first husband or whatever they call it when it's a man. They just get to hang out. Like, they're just the president's situation ship. The first booty call instead of the first lady. Alrighty. So, then April 30th, oh, we already talked about how Bill Clinton doesn't want to talk about what he did wrong. Then May 5th, Lewinsky's lawyer, William Ginsburg, tells reporters he agreed to let Vanity Fair send a celebrity photographer to his client in Malibu, California, because the star investigation imprisoned her libido, and he said that he hoped the shoot would help her feel good about herself. Should men be allowed to be lawyers? That is so America's mistress. That is perfect for a business card. Like, this is the worst advice I think I've ever given. Maybe do that in private. Like, maybe have a fun little sexy photo shoot and never tell anyone about it and keep the photos. But maybe not for Vanity Fair. Well, that would not be the wise choice. Um... And Judge Holloway says Secret Service agents must testify before the grand jury in the Lewinsky case, rejecting an argument that they have protective function privilege. So then June, don't worry, we're going to look at the photos. If they just didn't come out until June 10th, but don't worry, we'll be talking more and looking at them. Clap if you think he should suffer. Should men be allowed? Question mark. So June 2nd, Clinton's lawyers stopped pursuing his claim of executive privilege, and the media argues that's because he didn't want to be known as the first president since Richard Nixon to take an executive privilege claim to the Supreme Court. Also this day, Lewinsky fires Ginsburg and hires new lawyers, thank fucking Christ, um, Jacob Stein and Plato Kakaris, who secretly met with Starr to reiterate that they want to get things done quietly, but without their client having to plead guilty to anything. And then the week of June 10th, the July issue of Vanity Fair appears on newsstand on newsstands featuring glamour shots of Lewinsky posing like Marilyn Monroe, a look that does not go over well in the court of public opinion, which fucking anyone could have told you. But she does look great. Real can recognize real. Bill wanted a long-term, long-distance, low-commitment, casual girlfriend. That's all the president should be allowed to have. But Here's Monica Lewinsky. She fucking ate this photo shoot, but it was not a wise decision to let these see the light of day, especially in Vanity Fair. Monica walked so Kim K could run. Um, here's her looking great. Who's that girl? She literally looks great. Like, wow. Not the pink dog. I love the pink dog. Was this the face that launched a thousand subpoenas? Like, this was the worst advice ever. Like, even though I can recognize that, like, this is cunt. Like, this photo shoot is so cunt. I think all of us, like, all of us in 2023, we know that this is cunt. And I feel like if this happened today, it would go over really well. So maybe her lawyer was just too ahead of his time. Because in 1998, this was a terrible plan. Who, who did he think would respond well to this? I would sue that attorney. No, literally, like, the, he is, should men be allowed? Again, should men be allowed? Me seeing that a man lawyer permitted Monica Lewinsky to do Vanity Fair as she was being painted as a whore in the media. Like, Monica Lewinsky should have not gone in public the entire time. That would have been the best thing for her to do, is to barely go in public and do a couple very staged things where she, like, ran to the grocery store looking extremely extremely sad and extremely conservative would have been the wise decision to make made her look super innocent that's what i would have done is i would be like we need to cast you as the dumbest stupidest most innocent person ever that's who you are you are so stupid and innocent and you didn't know what was going on okay look at me you don't know what's going on you don't know i would like oh god monica needed chris jenner and I think Kris Jenner was very available at this time. Now that I'm thinking back to the Kris Jenner times, where was Chris? Where was Auntie Chris? Oh my God, imagine, imagine how history would have changed if Kris Jenner was doing the PR for Monica Lewinsky, January, 1998. Chris would have handled it so well. I'm so confident 
Chris would have handled it so, so well. Do you think a woman lawyer would have allowed the photos? I want everyone to have an opinion on this in the comment, the chat, whatever the fuck we call it on here. Do you think a woman lawyer would have let her do this? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I completely agree. A woman lawyer would not have allowed this. Would not have allowed this. Where was Kris Jenner? Maybe. Or I need Kris Jenner. I like where was Kris Jenner. I'll, I'll play with it. I don't want to get sued by Kris Jenner. That would be bad. Linda would have. Linda would have been like, yeah, girl, I'll do the Vanity Fair. Where is Chris? Do you like Big Brother? I have not really seen it. What would Chris Jenner do? I think no women were on set behind the camera consulted before the press. No women were alerted. No women were a part of this decision making process. Linda would have had her in Playboy. Me, if I was Monica Lewinsky's lawyer and she asked me if doing Vanity Fair was an okay idea. It's just so obviously bad. It's just so obviously a bad fucking idea. I just can't get my head around it. So we're in July. July 17th, subpoenaed Secret Service agents report to grand jury and Clinton himself is served with a subpoena that compels him to testify. Over the course of the following week, Clinton's personal secretary, Betty Curie, and lead Secret Service agent, Larry Cockle, would also testify. <laughs> Cockle. Um, then Lewinsky meets with Star's prosecutors in New York City. The next day, they announce an immunity deal for her. Yay! I am so happy she got an immunity deal. God, imagine if she went to jail for lying under oath. Jesus Christ. Chris Jenner would have had her in Playboy, then merch Ellen Oprah Today Show the whole rounds. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Monica needed a momager, either Chris Jenner or Mama Redacted. Oh God. Uh, my mother probably would have handled this well. But anyway, Clinton agrees to testify before the grand jury voluntarily on July 29th. Then, August 3rd, a blood sample is taken from Clinton for DNA testing against stains from the blue dress taken from Monica Lewinsky. This story became public news on August 19th. So those of you that were asking, like, did the public know about this? Yes, but not the day it happened, like a little bit later, like hours, days, or weeks, depending on the thing. We will look at the dress. So Lewinsky begins to testify before the grand jury, already having spent days in interviews. And then August 17th, Clinton testifies to the grand jury for more than four hours on closed circuit television. He admits to the inappropriate intimate contact, but also says that he had given accurate evidence in January, arguing that it depends on what the meaning of the word is, is. That evening, he speaks to the nation in a televised address, admitting for the time, for the first time that he had a relationship with Lewinsky. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part, which I am solely and completely responsible. Very tricky wording, because remember before he said I did not have sexual relations with that woman, and now he said I had a relationship that was not appropriate. He didn't say relations, and he didn't say sexual. Like, I will grant that he fucking ate this argument. Like, he really ate his words here. They really, they really did play the little, well, huh, I didn't lie. Technically, technically I didn't lie. He didn't know what the word is meant, okay? Cut him some slack. Sir, English is your first language. Um, my mother refuses to be on the internet with me because she said that she doesn't want one of her clients to see it. So, that's tough. So, this is the blue dress. Because remember, Monica Lewinsky has an immunity deal. So, she told the prosecutors, basically, I will tell y'all everything and give you whatever the fuck I have as long as I don't get in trouble. So, she had this blue dress that I guess he came on that she didn't wash because fucking Linda Tripp was like, no, keep it. Just leave it. Because she was like, oh, I have to take it to get dry cleaned. He has, it has this stain from Bill on it. And Linda was like, girl, keep that dress. You never know. You never know. So the FBI report on the stain of Monica Lewinsky's blue dress. Horrifying. 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 Clown shit. Clown shit. Clown shit. Clown shit. Clown shit. <laughs> she said, I got this spludge on a dress still, y'all. <laughs> well, no, remember... They had the tapes of the phone conversation. So they were like, get us that fucking dress, girl. Get us that fucking dress. So they really already had everything. Like, she was giving them everything that they already had. Because she told Linda all of this stuff. 
So they're like, and she was like mad upset about this because she didn't want to throw her little situation ship under the bus and get him in trouble. So naturally she was a sad girl about the whole situation. So how did the media portray Monica Lewinsky? Terribly. When the story broke in 1998 that President Bill Clinton had carried out an affair with the young former White House intern Monica Lewinsky, the media eagerly prepared to make Monica Lewinsky the face of the scandal. The newspapers and on cable news and talk shows, she became voraciously a slut, an innocent victim, a liberated woman, someone sexy, someone fat. They also talked about how she was fat all the time and she literally wasn't. Someone feminine and someone, someone unwomanly. Her name became synonymous with a sex act. Her humiliation became a national spectacle. I became a social representation, Lewinsky would later write for Vanity Fair, a social canvas on which anybody could project their confusion about women, sex, infidelity, infidelity, politics, and body issues. Monica Lewinsky has gained back all the weight she lost since last year. I believe that's the cover story in Newsweek. In fact, she told reporters she's even considering having her jaw wired shut, but then nah, she didn't want to give up her sex life. That's what Jay Leno said about her. This is what David Letterman said. You may think that you have a stressful job, but since she's been a senator, Hillary Clinton has, they, Hillary Clinton, they say, put on 30 pounds. In fact, she's gotten so heavy that today Bill hit on her, making a joke about Monica Lewinsky. And then I think Monica Lewinsky is the one who should apologize to America. She's a homewrecker. If anybody really owes an apology, I think it's her. That's what Bill Maher said. And then the common right-wing slogan is Hillary sucks, but Monica swallows or Monica blows. Which is just like, she's literally such a victim in all of this that it's just so fucking sad and disgusting that these grown people cannot think of any other jokes other than this. Like, you're really going to tell me that you're a professional comedian and the only joke you can think of is making fun of a young woman who has been repetitively like predatorized by gross men in positions of power and you as a whole ass comedian with a whole ass show can't think of anything else to joke about and i'm not saying you can't joke about the situation i'm not saying it's not funny it's funny that the president had an affair and got caught that's funny make fun of the fucking president he's right there but everyone chose to make fun of monica lewinsky who's the fucking victim in the situation disgusting Disgusting, 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 disgusting. Me reading the coverage of Monica Lewinsky from the 1990s. Men deserve less. They deserve, they deserve nothing. Honestly, the way these men were fucking speaking about her is so sad. It is so fucking sad. Oh, it makes me so mad. Then, so get to September. September 9th, Congress receives two copies of Starr's 445-page report on the investigation and supporting evidence, which takes up 36 boxes. In the report, he details the findings of his four-year, $52 million investigation, only mentioning the Whitewater land deal a handful of times. So all of this fucking time, money, and energy gets spent on this fucking real estate investigation that isn't even a real estate investigation. And the report cites 11 impeachable offenses. Um, then September 11th, Congress releases the star report to the public over the following days, a video of Clinton's testimony, as well as transcripts of the Lewinsky and Tripp are released. And then on September 14th, the CNN USA Today Gallup poll finds that Clinton's approval rating is up at 64%. Meanwhile, 31% think he should be impeached and 36% say that he should resign. So here is a clip of him from um, September 21st, 1998. I think what they were to do to her and all these other people. This is his testimony. Nothing about sexual harassment was outrageous. Just so they could hurt me politically. So I just I do agree with him that the what they did to her just because they wanted to hurt him politically, like they are not lawyers that know how to prosecute sexual harassment and this suit was not about sexual harassment in any way, shape or form. It was not about protecting women in the workplace. Well, you're not telling our grand jurors that if you think the case was a political case or a setup, Mr. President, that that would give you the right to commit perjury. No, sir. No, sir. In the face of their, the Jones lawyers, the people that were questioning me, in the face of their illegal leaks, their constant unrelenting illegal leaks, in a lawsuit that I knew, and that by the time this deposition and this discovery started, they knew was a bogus suit on the law and a bogus suit on the facts. The question in the face of that, I knew that in the face of their illegal activity, I still had to behave lawfully. 
but I want it to be legal without being particularly helpful. I thought that was that was what I was trying to do, and this is the you're the first person who ever suggested to me that that I should have been doing their lawyers work for them when they were perfectly free to ask follow up. Okay, questions. let me put on, on one or two occasions, captions for you. Mr. Bennett invited them to ask follow. -up. Like he really obviously I don't like that he is a predator in the workplace. But when it comes to public speaking, he eats. He eats. He eats so fucking hard. <coughs> Put that finger away, Billy. What questions? It now appears to me they didn't because they were afraid I would give them the truthful answer and that there had been some communication between you and Miss Tripp and them, and they were trying to set me up and trick me. And now you seem to be complaining that they didn't do a good enough job. I did my best, sir. At this time, I did not know what I now know about this. A lot of other things were going on in my life. Did I want this to come out? No. Was I embarrassed about it? Yes. Did I ask her to lie about it? No. Did I believe there could be a truthful affidavit? Absolutely. Now, that's all I know to say about this. I will continue to answer your questions as best I can. So. We're just going to watch that part. The rest of it, you can tell it's just him being good at talking. Then October transcripts of Lewinsky and Tripp's taped phone conversations are released. I think some of them already were. They released more. And then October 5th, the House Judiciary Committee votes along party lines to recommend an impeachment inquiry. In such situation, the House decides whether to charge the president with impeachment and what charges should be brought. Then the Senate acts as a jury and decides whether to acquit or convict. A two-thirds majority in the Senate is required to remove the president from office. So basically, let me reread this again. So the House Judiciary Committee votes along party lines to recommend an impeachment. So the House votes to recommend an impeachment inquiry, and the House decides whether to charge the president with impeachment and what charges should be brought, and then the Senate decides if they're going to remove the president or not. So the House of Representatives votes to begin an open-ended impeachment inquiry, allowing the House Judiciary Committee to draw up charges based on Starr's reports. 31 Democrats vote in favor of opening the inquiry. So the House votes to open this inquiry. Then November 3rd, 1998's midterm elections, Democrats score unexpected gains, adding five seats to the House, while the ratio of Republicans to Democrats remains the same in the Senate. Surveys of voters show that a majority didn't want Congress to hold an impeachment hearings or want Clinton, who remained popular, to resign. So the voters really don't give a fuck. Like, even though it was a huge political spectator, people didn't really want him to resign. Or spectacle? That's, yeah. Even though everyone was obsessed with it, no one really cared that much simultaneously. So then November 5th, the House Judiciary Committee asked Clinton 81 written questions about the Independent Counsel's report. They ranged from, do you admit or deny that you are the chief law enforcement officer in the United States of America, to precise accountings of whether he gave particular gifts to Lewinsky. And then on November 13th, Clinton settles the appealed sexual harassment suit out of court with Paula Jones, paying her $850,000 and admitting nothing. Speck potatoed. Like Vogue 73 questions? Stop. Imagine the impeachment inquiry, but they film it like the Vogue 73 questions. Monica was collateral damage. Yes, very much so. Monica was collateral damage. Then December 1998. December 11th, the House Judiciary Committee votes to recommend impeachment. They approve two articles of impeachment pertaining to perjury, one for lying to a grand jury and another for his testimony in response to questions about his relationship with Lewinsky and one about obstruction of justice. December 12th, Clinton says that he won't resign and denies lying under oath. That same day, the House Judiciary Committee approves a fourth article of impeachment alleging falsehoods in his answers to the 81 questions. They also reject the resolution to censure his reprehensible conduct supported by Democrats. Such a measure would have allowed Congress to express disapproval without resorting to impeachment. So I guess Congress has an official way to say they don't like something without impeaching it. And then on December 16th, Clinton orders airstrikes against Iraq after Saddam Hussein refuses to allow UN weapons inspectors to enter the country, delaying the House impeachment vote. I'm not an expert on the Middle East, but that timing seems very interesting to me. Like, you can't just life hack your impeachment, but I guess you can, apparently. He was like, mm, 
what if we order airstrikes and then we have to delay the impeachment vote, though? That would be goofy, right? That would be really silly and goofy. Getting impeached? Bomb people. Airstrikes. <laughs> it's just crazy that we let him get away with that. And then on December 19th, the House of Representatives votes to impeach Clinton on two of the four articles, um, the charge of perjury in his August 17th grand jury testimony and the charge that he prevented and obstructed and impeded the administration of justice. Clinton vows to remain in office until the last hour of the last day of my term and a Gallup poll finds record high approval of how he handles his job for president. And then as the year came, the year came to a close, time noted that 1998 had taken a toll on Washington. All around the city, there was a feeling of this brooding, brutal lasting damage had been done to the already threadbare culture of political accommodation and that the impeachment would not be the end but the beginning and that it would be something bad. I do agree with that, that I feel like the Bill Clinton impeachment is really when the right started to use like the courts and other avenues to get stuff that they wanted. I feel like that was the turning point of the right wing being like, Hmm. Instead of going about things in a direct way, if we do this kind of like behind closed door, take advantage of these people, pay for their lawyers to sue this person we hate, that's when they started to get creativer and started to get messy. Creativer is not a word. More creative. So... After 1998, January 7th, the Senate begins its trial of President Bill Clinton in the impeachment trial. The Senate's court, the Supreme Court Chief Justice presides and 100 senators serve as jurors. January 19th, Clinton delivers his State of the Union address, which he doesn't mention the investigation or impeachment at all, which is hilarious. That is strong BDE to give your State of the Union and not mention your ongoing impeachment. Um, then January 27th, the Senate rejects a motion to dismiss the impeachment charges. And then February 8th, closing arguments are delivered from two sides. The Senate begins private deliberations the following day. Then February 12th, the Senate finishes the impeachment trial, acquitting Clinton on both charges. Acquittal means a judgment that a person is not guilty of the crime which the person has been charged. The vote comes out at 55-45 on perjury and 50-50 on obstruction of justice. Republicans block a Democratic move to censure President Bill Clinton. By Times Magazine count, 2,345 minutes of CBS, NBC, and ABC Evening News were devoted to the scandal between January 22nd and February 12th. So even though he didn't get removed from office, it's still all over the fucking news. Do you think that Monica has her tweet drafted for the day Bill dies, or is she going to freestyle it? I hope both. I hope she live streams the day that he dies. That's my wish for her. Me seeing that a man abused his power and a woman faced all the consequences. He literally did not get in trouble. Did not get removed from office. I guess he did get impeachment votes, which is embarrassing. But did not get removed from office and still had extremely, extremely high popularity. All right, man. Fucking all right. That's fine, I guess. Me trying to decide if I hate Hillary Clinton for all of this because I know she's a victim of misogyny in the media and Bill did her dirty as fuck by this, which I really stand by. Like, do I like Hillary Clinton? No. Do I think that Hillary Clinton is a good person? Also, no. Do I think that Hillary Clinton is the victim of misogyny and the victim of a terrible husband? Yes and yes. All of those things can be true at the same time. Like I've said before, I love nuance. I hate when people are complex. So, most of her public life, she has maintained, Monica Lewinsky being the she, most of her public life, Monica Lewinsky has maintained that the relationship with Clinton was fully consensual and that the true villain of the story was Ken Starr in the media, witch hunt, which she experienced after the report. I also, like, that's what she's saying, and I choose to believe her. Like, if you had a consensual relationship, you had a consensual relationship, and if that's your thought on it, that's your thought on it. I still think Bill Clinton's in the wrong because, like, he's the president, but if she does not... Like, that's what she's saying. That's the case then. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's up to her to decide, quite literally. I still think Bill Clinton is shitty for it, but 
I don't think those things are mutually exclusive. Um, but in 2018, in the midst of the resurgent Me Too movement, she expressed a few other thoughts. She said, now at 44, I'm beginning, just beginning, to consider the implications of the power differentials that were so vast between a president and a White House intern. I'm beginning to entertain the notion that in circumstances, the idea of consent might as well be rendered moot, she wrote for Vanity Fair. Exactly. That's exactly my point. This is as far as I've gotten in my reevaluation. I want to be thoughtful. It was Lewinsky who was serving as a producer on impeachment who told the show's writers not to elide her decision to go after Clinton and to show the thong flash on camera. She said that I just felt like I shouldn't get a pass, she told the New York Times. So she has fully admitted I was flirting with him. I pursued it. It was consensual, like it was not forced. But it appears that now she's also recognizing that there are power dynamics at play within that. It makes sense that Lewinsky is being so cautious and so thoughtful about this question and so unwilling to commit to one particular interpretation of the facts. Every version of the story we tell about her, even the good ones, contain within itself the possibility of another story in which she is humiliated of a fact she is fully aware. So often I have struggled with my own sense of agency versus victimhood, she said. So her essay, her essay in Vanity Fair is really good if you want to read it. So, where is Monica Lewinsky today? In 2005, she moved to the UK to study for a master's degree in psychology at the London School of Economics. Great move. Get on out of here. Exactly what I would have done. Obviously, people in England knew about this, but I feel like you'd be much, much less likely to get recognized on the street all the time and shit like that. Um, for several years, she stayed out of the spotlight and then returned in May 2014 with an essay in Vanity Fair called Shame and Survival, where she discussed her life over the past decade and the scandal itself. Her Twitter bio, Lewinsky describes herself as an anti-bullying activist, TED Talk giver, Vanity Fair contributor, rap song muse, ex-beret model, and knitter. There's a famous photo of her in a beret, which is a type of hat. Then, 2014, she took her first public stand against cyberbullying, referring to herself as patient zero of online bullying in an interview at Forbes 30 Under 30 Summit. She has since continued to speak out publicly against cyberbullying and serves as an ambassador and strategic advisor for the anti-bullying organization Bystander Revolution. She also famously gave a TED Talk called The Price of Shame, where she partially recounted the impact of the scandal on her. The talk went viral. Watch it. It's great. She's great. And she served as a co-producer and the main consultant on impeachment, an American crime story. Like we said, that's where they showed like the thong flash and that she was being forward with the president. So hope that we are all enjoying the lovely little history lesson that we got. That has been the story of Monica Lewinsky so far. Monica Lewinsky deserved so much better than she got. Um, the vibes tonight were very immaculate. Thank you all so, so, so much for being here. Next week, we will be talking about the story of Paris Hilton. For those of you that do not know, Paris Hilton is actually a very, very complex woman, and she experienced a lot of abuse as a teenager through the, like, fucking behavior camp things. Um, we'll talk about the school Paris went to. Yes. So we will be talking about Paris Hilton. It will be probably a long stream. A lot of people are saying they just finished her book. I have not read her book, but I did listen to the celebrity memoir book club talk about her book. So I feel like I kind of got like a spark notes version. Um, first Twitch stream I've ever watched on my own. Thanks. Ooh, glad you were here and glad that you enjoyed it. So next week we will be talking about Paris Hilton. But for now, let's go ahead and play the game. And for those of you on TikTok, love you so much. I'm going to turn you off. Good night, TikTok people. Those of you on Twitch, we are going to do the carnival because Bill is a clown. And then I don't want the noise to play on you guys' things. Okay. So, Bill is a clown. That's why we're doing carnival. Live, laugh, love. Go ahead. Let me know. Not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Why is my iPad doing that? So if you would like to play the game, I do not need your email address. I do not need you to log into anything. I do not need an account. I do not need money. I do not need any of those things. All you have to do if you want to play the game is go to join.nearpod.com and enter the code N 4 H R V, or I put the link in the chat. So let me paste this again. No, not what I wanted, not what I wanted. Go away. What Mac are you getting? The Mac desktop, I can't remember. My friend was an Apple genius and I like wrote it all down with him. So 
I put that link in the chat again. Once you join, it'll ask you to put your name in. Whatever you put in will come up on screen, so feel free to make a little joke. We are going to play a trivia game. It is 10 multiple choice trivia questions about what we talked about today. Um, and it lets you pick a little character. So I'll give you a couple more minutes to join. I'll put the directions back up there. I wish I had a QR code. Again, join.nearpod.com, and the code is N four. H R V N four H R V. And while we are awaiting people to join the lovely Nearpod, I want to say a thank you to anyone that gifted towards my computer fund. We are now at $1,182. How much more do we have left then? Let me do some math. 1857 minus 1182. We have $674 left. Love to see it. Love to see it. There's currently 286 people watching right now. So if everyone donated $2, we'd be there. If you are stressed about money, please do not give to my computer fund. Um, but if you are not stressed about money and you enjoy these classes and would like me to start doing more videos and looking at more websites and pulling up more documents and doing cooler shit, I need a new computer for that. I will be getting the big iMac that has the mic and the camera and everything all in there. I would love if you wanted to throw a dollar to my way for that new computer. We greatly appreciate. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, and someone said I'm Australian. How do I donate? I can only accept via Venmo because they're gifts, but I'll be dropping merch soon. So a good another way to support is to buy merch when it comes out. Have you made prog more progress on the pink wall? No, not since last week, tragically. Hence the remix stream this week. A little busy round here. All right, there's 66 people on here. I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. <clears throat> 10, 9. People from Australia watch me. That's so cool. Australia is my favorite country I've ever visited. It was like America except cleaner and the people were nicer. Um, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, I wanted to say your tiling TikTok was so satisfying. I'm glad you enjoyed it. There's two right answers here. Not so burping. It's really not ideal. It's probably because I had hot wings and a cherry Dr. Pepper before doing this stream. That might have something to do with it, I think. Just a thought. The Pentagon parking lot. Who was the famous singer on the slide with Bill Clinton? Should have made mine Linda be tripping. Oh, I'm like a hot mess express today. The cream soda Dr. Pepper is my jam. I don't really like, I don't like like vanilla-y things with Dr. Pepper. I don't really like vanilla and soda. When did the relationship start? Y'all hate the year ones, so sorry about that. I'm sorry, you clicked the wrong one. That's the worst. Yeah, this girl that used to do my lashes, I really hate the way she runs her Instagram, I have to say. It's not Halo Wink Lash. Halo Wink Lash, if you are in Miami, go to Halo Wink Lash. That is the realest bitch of all time. It's not her, because I know I've talked about her before. I love her. She's amazing. She's so nice, too. Where did Monica go to work immediately after the White House? Oh, I fucked this up. It should be the Pentagon. 
Should definitely be the Pentagon. Put the UN. Sorry about that. Was it? No, wait, now I'm doubting myself. I don't even fucking know. I'm <laughs> sorry, I really fucked up question four. It was tough. Doing bad today. Me too, clearly. That was the Office of Legislative Affairs. Oh, I think that was within the Pentagon. I'm sorry. I really fucked y'all over. That was my bad. Bill Clinton took accountability as soon as the allegation came out. Is that true or false? Oh, fucking knot in my hair. It's okay, just round up our grade, of course. Of course! I did not take accountability with that woman. What did Hillary say about the scandal? Bad boy, Billy. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? I immediately started sweating. I'm really playing only being here half the stream. That's the way you gotta do it sometimes. Who did Monica call for help? people and they take their butt babies in public and they like still do all of their things like they're like oh I'm still hanging out with my friends I'm still at the bar I just brought the baby with me I'm like I'm really happy for you and I know that that would never be me I feel like if I had a baby I wouldn't leave my house for 10 years like you can barely get me out of the house right now let alone if I had to bring a whole ass child with me no I don't want to watch a Drewski Vines oh Vines what is this app? For reals. Who said, I really believe it's important for me to not say any more about this? A whole ass child and their numerous toilet accessories. Exactly. Like, they just have so many supplies. I don't even like when I go out with my boyfriend and he asks me to bring a purse because he wants to put something in it. Because normally I don't bring a purse. So sometimes he'll be like, can you bring a purse? And I'm like... Can you bring a purse? Like, no, I can't bring a purse. I don't want to bring a purse. Because realistically, all I need is my phone. Because you're driving, so you have your keys. What magazine did Monica Lewinsky pose for? Fuck a purse. Like, honestly, fuck a purse. I really want crumble cookie right now. What color was the dress? This one's easy. I did not need to give you 30 seconds for this. I'm so mad I chose the distractor. Sorry about that. Whenever my boyfriend asks me to bring a purse, he always has to carry it if it gets too heavy for me. Usually if he wants me to bring a purse, it's because we're going to like a dinner or a party or something. So he wants me to bring like a little, well he doesn't give a shit what purse it is, but it's like a little purse. Alright team. Nice job, bad boy, Billiam, Billery Rodham Clinton, the Pentagon parking lot, Haley, the stick up Linda Tripp's ass, trigger warning government, Billiam, dress, Lauren H, I didn't have sexual relations with that woman, your favorite cowboy in Ikea cafeteria, Elise, Emma, and I had relations with that woman, and I will read 16 because it's funny, a Bill Clinton is a thought parking lot. Nice job, everybody else. Nice job, nice job. We love to see the trivia game slang as always. Why do men? 
Monica is my idol, Billiam's whale tail, Linda's secret tapes. So many good ones. Nice job. Nice job. Thank you again, everyone, for being here. This is always the highlight of my week. I love spending my Wednesday with you all talking about random bullshit. I'm really excited to talk about Paris Hilton next week. Paris Hilton is a really misunderstood person. Paris Hilton is actually a genius in many, many ways, and we will be talking about her and her life and what she's up to and what she's doing, where she's been, and what she has done. Um, I, and I must say, I'm going to be transparent with y'all. I thought tonight was going to do numbers more than it already, more than it did because my promos on TikTok did really well, but we really didn't do that many, didn't do numbers tonight, but the vibes were immaculate. So that's where I stand. Thank you so much for being here. You guys were so fucking funny. And I love, this is what I love about this, like, I don't want to call y'all a community, but you really are a community. This is what I like about this circle of trust we've created is that we can all laugh about really serious things that like, without punching down like we can laugh about serious topics like sexual harassment in the workplace without being dickheads and laughing at victims you know what i mean and i think that that is a really difficult thing to do and i greatly appreciate that like you guys are in that same headspace with me oh and someone said i made you laugh that made my night savannah life what did you say again it was really funny but i can't remember what it was what did you say yes this stream will be on youtube I would love to see the demographic info of your audience. I need to look at it for Twitch. For TikTok, it is predominantly women aged 25 to 34 in the Midwest. Oh, the Trump and Olivia. Ah, that was so funny. That was so funny. Alrighty, let me look at the memes you guys left. Y'all should watch our interview with John Oliver. Yes. After Lewinsky stream part two, the only thing I, the only perspective is I still want the dogs. Billiam gets a blowy, Iranian airstrikes. <laughs> oh my god, that's really like jarring and true. Run the country, flirt with an inch. <laughs> Y'all are so fucking funny. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it there. This will be on YouTube as always. Hopefully it doesn't get eaten alive for copyright. Have a great night, make good choices. I will see you same place, same time, 7 p.m. Wednesday next week for Paris.